Hello, welcome home. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome <laughs> home to 2021. Thank God. <laughs> 2020 is over kaput. As Lou said, hindsight is 2020 now. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Happy New Year. Hello. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. I can't believe that it's over already. I'm a little bit sad about that. Um, before we get started, we have so much to talk to you about. Um, as usual, if you would be so kind as to share this video with your Facebook friend, I would very, very much appreciate it. Facebook friends, family, enemies, anybody you want to share it with, you're <laughs> perfectly fine with that. People you like, new people you don't. Okay. They might, they might make them like you again. Or make them unfriend you. Or make them unfriend you. <laughs> Either way, they make the decision. They cut you. <laughs> So, want me to see my other video? Go right ahead. Hello, and welcome to TMSM Weekly Live, show number 101. For, what day is it? January 4th, 2021. I'm Scott. I'm Michelle. And we have a heck of a show for you guys. It's been, what, three weeks? Three, three weeks. weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, like it's that. been a while. First, I want to say happy birthday to my Team Scott cheerleader, Randy. <laughs> happy birthday, buddy. Hope you're having a great day. Mm -hmm. Do you, like, uh, do you pay him to say nice things No, about he just does it because he likes me. <laughs> He loves the whole Team Scott thing. Checks in the mail, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, the last time that we saw you guys, uh, we had a guest on our show. Um, we had Equity Ben, Ben from Frozen, and we talked a little bit about um, all the announcements from the, what was it called? The Disney Plus announcements for all the shows and movies and such that are getting ready to come out in the next year. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called because it was a couple weeks ago. Shareholders, it was the shareholders meeting that talked all about that. Yeah, so um, I thought I wrote, I did, I wrote notes. Oh, Becky's on. Hey, Becky. Becky, hey, Becky. Um, I wrote notes so that I could, we could try to stay focused, but it is our first show of the year, and We're you know how, you know how we go. Um, Just and throw and there's food on the list, so. <laughs> Just throw the notes. We don't need no notes. Um, we'll do it live. Okay. No speaking notes. Okay, so let's get to it since we have a lot to talk about and we don't want to like run over because that means maybe you have TV shows you want to watch tonight. Or just or, get away from us. Or just get away from Okay, um, all right, anyway. So um, I thought we could talk a little bit about um, the Christmas season at Disney, being that it was so darn different this year. Big time different. So let's let's go back a few days before Christmas. Michelle and I's anniversary is actually on the 22nd of December. Um, and when we were in Michigan, we always went away to a town called Frankenmuth. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that in Michigan. I know it's, so, it's a store. It's a place that has the big Christmas store. Big Christmas store, right. Bronner's, which is the biggest Christmas store. And they've actually worked with Disney many times in the past um, for uh, ornaments and Christmas stuff, things like that. But normally, every year on the 22nd, we go there because the day we got married, that's where we went. Um, the two of us went there that day um, to have chicken dinner, which is a huge thing. It's a thing in, there. Frankenmuth, huge. <laughs> um, and then go to the Christmas store. So we have our routine. Well, this year was first time since we got married, we weren't able to do any part of that routine. So we decided, well, we're in Florida. Why not go to Disney? Go figure. I mean, you know, that sounds like a reasonable idea. Idea. So we went to the Wilderness Lodge, which we had both wanted to experience staying there, and we had never done it. So we actually did that on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, I loved it. I loved staying there. That resort is probably the best for the Christmas holiday. I think decorated ones. I think so because you know they have the big Christmas tree in the lobby, and they have like their fireplaces going, and they have like garland up around with the lights, and um, it's very um, homey. I guess you could. It say. is, and it reminds me a lot about Northern Michigan. Because yeah, of the and I would like that, say so. it's it's you know it's so it was just different, and I think that we wanted something a little bit Christmassy because when you stay in Frankenmuth, Michigan, it's like Christmas town, like all all year round. But especially at Christmas time, they have so many decorations. The whole city is lit up for Christmas, and it's mm -hmm. just I think for us being that we weren't home this year, it's kind of like um, let's find something close to it. If right. that makes sense. Right. And, and I mean, back home, they have the snow is usually falling on the day. It's always very cold. You go to all the little shops. They have like the fudge store and the cheese store. Saltwater and taffy. Saltwater taffy and all those things. The handsome cab ride going up and down the street. I mean, it's just, it's a fun place to go that we always look forward to every December going there. Um, so next year, hopefully, we'll get to get to experience that if, if everything's back open by then in Michigan. I sure hope so. Who knows? But anyway, the Wilderness Lodge. Let's go back to that. So the Wilderness Lodge was wonderful, um, even though we didn't spend a whole lot of time at the lodge because we went to Magic Kingdom 
and uh, it was it was kind of cool out that day, yep. like yep. sweatshirt weather. Um, we had spirit jersey though, I think. Did, no, you had I did. spirit jersey on. I was wearing two shirts. I still had shorts on. Cold. I still had shorts on. Oh, probably. Anyway. I always wear shorts. Um, I wore boots because <laughs> it was cold. Shorts, tennis shoes, spirit jersey. Um, anyway, so they still had like everything, you know, everything is all Christmassy and nice. And we um, took the boat over from the Wilderness Lodge. Mm -hmm. And that was it, that was nice, too. It was a lot quicker than taking the bus. They said the um, Castle Rock front said the bus would be about a half hour. Yeah. And I mean, the, the ferry boat took you like right over there. It's like a six minute boat ride. I mean, they were, they're moving them a lot prettier. faster, I think, right now. I think they're just to get people moving around. They're not. Because um, they can't fill the boat, so as soon as they get enough, enough people in there, they take off. And, they and we never really had to wait much no, either. No, not at all. So we went over to Magic Kingdom, and we had lunch at Tony's. Yeah, we decided to do an early lunch rather than a late dinner, because they were only open until 7 then, I believe. No, they were open later. Was it later? Maybe yeah. it was. But we ended up just doing a late lunch at Tony's, which was fantastic. We had gone there a few years back, mm -hmm. um, and we both wanted to try it again. And it was much better from what I remember this time than it was the first time. It, it was. Like, the first time we had it a couple of years ago, and it was, eh, you know, it was okay. But um, I love Italian food. It's, like, my favorite. It's in my jeans. And we can't have fried chicken. <laughs> and we couldn't have our chicken okay. dinner because of, you know, Michigan. But um, I had the chicken parmesan, and I haven't had like like I this is a total sidebar. So I've been dieting, and I told myself since I couldn't go home at Christmas that I was gonna allow myself like a two week cheat window. So this was like my first oh, instead of a cheat day, I had a cheat window. Do you guys ever have a cheat window? It can't just be me. It's usually from like four to six, not two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, somebody back me on this. Do you? Do you have a cheat window? <laughs> when I get up in the middle of the night and I'm hungry, I just drive whatever I want. That's I'm waiting for somebody window. to agree with me here. Not. All right, anyway. So um, that was like my first meal, my first cheat meal that I had had since September. She smiled so big. <laughs> so that could be why I thought Tony's was so fabulous. But I, I had that chicken parm, and it came with a side of spaghetti, and they put bread on the table. And we were gonna what? have, we were gonna have tiramisu, but we were too full. But I had pizza because I get pizza. <laughs> if they offer pizza, that's what I always go. Okay, for. Becky, Becky agrees with me. You cannot diet during Christmas. Robert Carlson, his whole life is a cheat window. Thank you because that's a lifestyle. <laughs> that's not a cheat window. That's a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle. <laughs> Sean's been cheating. Sean, you weigh like 30 pounds. <laughs> okay, Moses well, had to cheat for three years. Three years. Thank Jody's you. Jody's cheating are a thing in her life. Thank you. It's not just me. All right. <laughs> so, you know, you, you've got to get through things however you need to. Hashtag sometimes. cheat window. Hashtag cheat window. <laughs> Those well, shirts will be available tomorrow. On <laughs> so, yeah, that first cheat meal was great, and then it was downhill. Once you go there. down that, once you go out that window, you don't need to get back. Once you open that that cheat window up, man, oh my god! However, if you go through that window too quickly, you might not get through as fast. <laughs> because if you're out that window for two weeks, there's no telling. If you're and I thought back. I would feel guilty about it, but I didn't. I mean, I have a little bit. So, like, we I'll, we'll get some more food soon um so we went to uh cory never cheats Bye. we'll talk about that later mr Gideon. yeah we'll talk about that <laughs> um so magic kingdom was not it was more crowded the day we were there for our anniversary than after christmas which is weird but that's an, and we're gonna bookmark that one too um okay so we went to um we went to tony's we walked around um the whole why are you laughing at me because where did we stop right before we left to go back to the resort the confession. <laughs> we stocked up. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, we were we oh, so, okay, okay. So we went to we took the monorail. We were waiting for it to get dark out because I wanted to see the Christmas lights. And is that the only reason? Is that what I wanted? I want to see the Christmas lights. You want to see the little fireworks that go off um, when they show the projections on the castle. Okay. Yeah. So, so what we did. And you wanted pictures on Main Street at dark. I did. I only take the picture, same pictures over and over again. And I just. I, we could just green screen them and make you find It's the them. same picture. Um, okay, so anyway. Anyway, so we decided to waste some time and what? Robert, I'd be embarrassed if I died in an autopsy showed nothing but veggies in my stomach. 
seat window. <laughs> So we we took the monorail over. You cannot take the monorail to the poly right now because they're under construction. Right. So we took the the resort monorail around the loop just to go see um, the tree at the Grand Floridian. Mm -hmm. And uh, and go to Basin. And we did go to Basin. But I will tell you the truth. Um, you know they did not do the the gingerbread display at the um, Floridian this year. And it, you, it really was noticeable. I mean, the tree was beautiful, but it just seemed so quiet. And it didn't smell like gingerbread, of course. They could have piped that into the... <laughs> they can pipe in any smell anywhere else. Not there. But it was very different. It was just different and quiet. And that's the only thing that made me a little bit sad. It just didn't feel like Disney Christmas there. I no, guess it didn't. Say. Not at all. I think when you're used to how things are normally, and then when you see something so contrary to what it's usually like it just is different and it's funny because you only think about that once a year i mean christmas time feeling is only that one time a year we don't go to the floor reading maybe once at christmas time but to go in there at christmas and not have that you really notice it i really not thought they could have piped in some cookies now christmas music would have been nice they did have a piano player they did have a piano player was he playing christmas music? i don't know if he was or not no you said that i'm not sure i don't know so anyway so we sat over there a little bit like i said it was getting chilly out um, and we were waiting for it to get dark to go back right. to the Magic Kingdom. We were actually going to take the walkway back from the Floridian to the Magic Kingdom, but we just decided to jump on the boat. But that walkway is open if you haven't done that yet. So you can actually take the walkway from the Magic Kingdom to the Floridian and back. Um, we couldn't um, find it. See, we were going to walk back, and then we started going. There was a sign. We went the wrong way. It said to the, the boat and the walkway. the walkway. Well, it didn't. The sign said go that way, and it never told you where to turn. So we ended up back on the boat. <laughs> yeah, it was a little chilly. It was starting to get chilly, so we wanted to get back. Actually. Yeah. So then we ended up going back back to, back to Magic Kingdom, and um, I got to see my Christmas lights and all that stuff that I wanted to see. And like he said, let's go back to food for a second. Um, we stopped the confectionery on the way out. Which had a pretty good wait to get in there, and then once you got in there, there was a wait in line to get the to get to the counter where you could yeah. order the sweets out of the counter. Something we did not know though. Is that um, cast member came up and said, Would you like to get mine? Or you can just go to the register and they have all the snacks behind the register already pre wrapped and ready to go. And we just did that rather than wait another 20 minutes. Yeah, so you could stand in the line so that you can get the full experience of looking into the, the glass case. Or you could just go, if you know what you want, you could go right there and get what you wanted. What did, what did you get? Some, they had some of them up on the display where you see it. I had, I didn't realize that's what I thought it was a Rice Krispie treat, but it was a marshmallow covered in chocolate with peppermint. Oh, yeah, because you were bummed because it wasn't was a Rice Krispie treat. And then I did get a Rice Krispie. It, it was supposed to look like pecan pie. It, but it pecan yes. pie, But it was all Rice Krispie. So it was a Rice Krispie crust in one color. Then it was. It tasted like pecans, though. And it, it had looked, looked like pie. Yeah. But it was a Rice Krispie. It was kind of cool. And when you opened the box, you could smell. It smelled mm -hmm. like pecan pie. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And I got a cookie. Because, you know, at that point, here. And so then. You know, I got four things. I, I, think got, I got one. Did you get extra things? No, I bought two. Well, anyway, oh, so so we took the boat back to Wilderness Lodge, and um, so did you guys ever had their magic bars there? That's where her other treat came from. That's oh my gosh. Okay, so the magic bars for mm. those that don't know. Miss, I only got one treat. I only got one at the confectionery, which is true. The size of a window. <laughs> <laughs> a cheat window. <laughs> um, so the magic bars are like this big, and it's a cookie bar, and it has chocolate chips. It has coconut. It has butterscotch. It has like mm -hmm. all this yummy goodness in a bar. I haven't had one of those in forever, and I think I took the first bite, and I think I almost. I think I squealed a little bit, like, oh, this is so good. When you deprive yourself of sweets for months and then you can have said sweets, it's outstanding. But if it is one of your favorite treats that you haven't had in, like, years, it's even better. I haven't had them in years. So, but we'll get back to that. But he actually made some for home, and I ate almost all of them. Um, so anyway, so we had, like, the magic bars at, um, I did, at Wilderness Lodge. And Those then, were better. Disney's are mine. Yours. And the only reason is because I think you put more butterscotch chips in them. And more love. That too. Even though you did burn the first batch. I, used <laughs> I didn't really burn it. I grabbed the wrong thing, the wrong ingredient. It didn't come out. So we couldn't salvage them. So I went and bought new stuff and made it, and it came out perfect. 
<laughs> so um, after a whole day of eating bad things and, um, you know, having, we did have a good time walking around. Mm -hmm. So the next morning we actually, you know, cause you stay, if you stay on property, you can get into a park. So we went over mm -hmm. to Hollywood studios just to kind of do a lap around. Loop around. We, I was originally, I said, I'm going to wake up at seven and try to get a pass for a rise out that I seven o'clock came and went and I was still not awake. Um, and then we, we went over there. Of course, we didn't ride anything. I don't think while we were there. We there didn't. Okay, so Hollywood Studios on the 23rd was packed. So, like, when you're walking, um, and we got there around 11 o'clock, and we didn't have to wait at Starbucks for a coffee, which surprised me. And we're like, oh, maybe it's not so bad, because usually Starbucks has a line out the door at every park. So, we go towards the tiny theater and make a right, um, like, you know, to go towards Toy Story Land. And there was a cast member with a sign. Before you get to Walt Disney. Project. Formerly One Man's Dream, you yes. know what I'm talking about. By the Little Mermaid ride over there, that was the end of the line for Slinky Dog Dash. Now, if you recall, Slinky Dog Dash, it is way hey, in the back of Toy Story Land. Way, way down many different ways. And as you're walking that way, you remember Pixar Place that used to be open. Yes. It's been closed. They haven't. They've had the doors. They closed did the incredible thing there. Yeah, the incredible dance for a while. thing there. They actually had those doors open because the line for Toy Story uh, Midway Mania was going on that way. Yeah. So the lines were long. So we're walking through Toy Story Land, and the line for Slinky Dog Dash, like I said, was way past um, Walt Disney Presents. I think I want to say it was 90 minutes. So 90 minutes is about average, just because of the spacing that it was so far back. It was a really long line. Yeah. And then, so we, you know, we obviously did not go on anything over there. We were just walking. So we're, we walked past, um, you know, the big Buzz Lightyear outside of Aliens Flying Saucers, and then there's another cast member <laughs> with a sign. Right as soon as you stepped in the galaxy's edge. And you'll never guess what that line was for. Smuggler's Run. Um, and they were all the way through, you know, if you go, if, if you are familiar with Galaxy's Edge, it, the Millennium Falcon ride is way over in the back. And this line was almost to Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> and, and what almost. was weird is, and it kind of bothered me a little, and I don't know why it bothered me so much, but there was areas where they had the doors open that you normally see in Galaxy's Edge, where it would look like mm -hmm. like a Star Wars like wall or whatever. They had those open to where you were just seeing backstage at Disney, so it kind of ruined it for me a little bit seeing it like that. Normally, and that's another so, thing, you know, normally they don't have um, any backstage areas showing. You know they always they're always really good about keeping up the illusion of you know whatever land even in. draping or whatever just to make it and you could see, see like backstage areas because what they were having to do is kind of like wind the lines through and make their own lines i guess yeah, you could say yeah. so they opened up so there's an area um by kylo ship the little shop right there and then there's a doorway there that's a big doorway they had those doors completely open well when you look through that doorway you see uh like a cash shed and <laughs> just normal they put up like these fake bushes over there and yeah. it kind of didn't cut it because but i understand i understood why they did it yeah. you know this year or last year is circumstances that you know you have to make adjustments right. for and um oh and then so like you walk past you walk past the Millennium Falcon and you try to go up those stairs where they have like the the um the restaurant. The restaurant so. There's a cast member standing on the stairs and telling you to turn around because they're trying to section people out that order food outside there. So you had to turn around and walk all the way back where you just came from, go all the way yeah, back I mean, around again. It would have been nice to know that five minutes earlier. It would that's what I was like. <laughs> They waited until you started going up the stairs before they told you that you can't go that way. So you had to like totally backtrack everything that you just already saw. Which was fine. It was fine. I, mean, we were, I was trying to walk off those magic bars <laughs> so, and that cookie. Um, but yeah, it was very it was very crowded on the 23rd. Yes. Um, and then the 24th was Christmas Eve. And um, this, like I, if you read, read any of my um, Florida Living blogs, then you know that, that we were not home with family this year. And this was the first year since my birth that I've not been home at Christmas time. So I am, I, <laughs> since my birth, I've always been with my family at Christmas. This was the first time ever. So, and I, I don't know if you've gathered this about me. I get emotional and sad about stuff. And I take everything to heart and I like cry. Well, not so much anymore. I I don't. I cry when I'm sad about stuff. Not, not to when the I'm public. Mad. <laughs> not 
when I'm mad now, I just I gotten really feisty in the past year. But um, I was sad yeah, no about about not being able to go home. So we kind of had a deal that you know if we could throw some Disney in there, that'd be great, <laughs> just to kind of appease me a little bit. So we decided. I told the boys you are not allowed to say anything negative. Or you will lose all Christmas presents. Yeah. So he told the boys that they weren't allowed to give me any crap because mom said at Christmas time we're we're gonna fix that. So they weren't allowed to give me any fuss whatsoever, and they didn't. I know. I told him he said you will lose a present. I will start with the <laughs> biggest one first and work my way down. So that way, that morning when you open it, all you're gonna have is a body wash. And that's it. <laughs> no, no complaining, no fussing. So what we decided to do was uh, we went to Epcot for Christmas Eve. And we made a reservation at Garden Grill, mm-hmm. which is we had never eaten at, at mm-hmm. Garden Grill before. So, um, and it's got like for those that don't know, it's a family style, and it has like the potatoes and turkey and gravy, mm-hmm. like a, a Christmas dinner. Mac and I guess cheese, you could say. but it was it was good. Um, there was no, it was, a, it also had a, like a chimichurri steak uh, piece with it. It really wasn't bad at all. I just um, the only part we didn't really like was that the characters they do come out, but they come out in the second level of the circle, and, you're, and you don't even realize they're there until they basically walk past you. You can't really, <laughs> you can't see the characters because they're up on a level behind you. So a cast member will come and tell you, "Oh, Mickey's there," and then what he had to do was take his cell phone out, put the phone on reverse to take a selfie, selfie. with the character that was above you. So like I could see like Mickey's ears. But we didn't really see Mickey. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I know they're doing it because they have to do, they want to do something. They bring the characters in. And I don't know if there's any other way they could do it there. I think that's the whole thing. I don't know. But, you know, I really, the reason that we made the the dinner was to have kind of like a family style dinner. And then my other thought was, well, Festival of the Holidays is going on. And, you know, the lines are so busy back there to even get anything from the food booths. Well, to my absolute surprise. In every single country. I, all I, I heard was, I can't believe how dead it is here. There was nobody at Epcot. Like when 11 we went, countries, 11 times it's not dead. <laughs> no, I was going back to Garden Grill for a second. Okay, go back. Um, because when we were at Garden Grill, there was maybe five people in there eating, including us. Yes, it was really There strange. was nobody there. So our, our server just had us. And it wasn't rotating. And it was not rotating. Um, and then there was the, the pop-up characters in the back that if they told you they were there, you just, they're there. And our view was actually <laughs> the the desert of the land, the, land. Ride, the boat ride. We got to, That's what we were staring at. Me and Andrew kept saying it was Tatooine with one son as opposed to two. That's true. <laughs> so um, my whole point was that Garden Grill was not crowded. Right. And then when we started walking towards World Showcase, um, I couldn't believe, I could, just couldn't believe the weather was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to see the new front of Epcot where they have the, the new fountain with the big glass pillars or whatever. I don't even know what you call those. I what do you call those? Area. But they have lights sticking out of them at the top, which is kind of cool. It kind of mm-hmm. reminded me of Vegas, but you know, like the Luxor. But, <laughs> not, and, not on that level, though. But on, at nighttime, we were we were actually in the American Pavilion, and if you look across, you can actually see the light beam coming out of the top. It looks like yeah. it's uh, just beyond Spaceship Earth, but there's a beam that's going all the way, and you can see that from across the, the lagoon there, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, but anyway, back to if there being nobody there. So um, we did the land because they have, like, the Christmas overlay. Mm-hmm. Um, we did Soren. It was walk on Soren. Mind we Christmas perfect, Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve. We were in the perfect spot in Soren. If you, I put the video out, but we were center row, second section, center seat. There was seat, like was nobody perfect. there, you guys. Yeah, so wonderful. then when we, you know, for us, the holidays is always jam packed, and it was not. We walked around. It was very. It was almost a little bit. I don't know what the word would be. Surreal, eerie. I don't know. It just like there was nobody there. <laughs> I felt like yeah, we rented up hat to ourselves. We did. She didn't know it. I, I, I splurged. <laughs> yeah. But it was very strange. And then it kind of made me second guess all the stuff we ate at dinner because we really could have eaten the stuff at the food booths and things because there was no food pack. And the problem was we were too full from the dinner to eat at the food booths. I think, oh, I got, they had these weird kind of beignets at this one booth. And I thought it was like a, a regular beignet, but it was like, it was almost like a churro. Mm-hmm. It was very different. I didn't get my pastrami sandwich. You didn't get your pastrami. The whole festival. 
if you've never had it, make sure you go there next year. And Andrew got something from the Jap Japan. Yeah, got some noodles and something some kind of noodles. Um, so um they even got water. Because he was full. Um so yeah, so I've cat on surprisingly, very surprisingly, um, for Christmas Eve. You know, usually you you see the the stats and the pictures and everything during Christmas week right. at the parks and it's crazy. And not this year. No. And that's what we kept telling the boys would like take this in because it will never be like this again. I mean, with everything getting better, hopefully, with the with the vac uh, vaccine such going forward by next year, I'm hoping they can be at a higher capacity even. So it will not be like it was this year. Um, hopefully, never again. I mean, hopefully, this will be the slowest Christmas week ever at mm -hmm. Disney. It was just very surprising, um, but we did enjoy Christmas Eve at Epcot. Um, it was kind of nice to be able to walk around and no crowds. It was. Uh, and then when we left, so there was a cold front blowing in that night and it like, don't laugh, Florida cold front, but it was cold. Like they, I don't know if you saw, like if you watch any Florida news stations or something like on uh, Facebook, but they kept talking all week long. There was going to be like a 40 degree difference between, you know, yeah. the high of the day. And it's true. Yeah. I think that day it hit almost 80 and then we woke up to 30, 30 something, 30 something, something by Christmas morning. In the morning. Yeah. Sienna brought in the cold weather with him. Yeah, it was cold. So do you want to tell him the snowman story or we should we skip it? I can tell it. So we get home. Randy knows it because we talk about it. Get home. All our decorations are up in their front yard. It's all nice. Looks very festive. Come in the house, put away our stuff. All of a sudden I get a alert on my phone, high wind advisory in the area. Um it got cold fast. Good. So we I go outside. Ten yeah, ten minutes. It was literally ten minutes. I go back outside. The temperature had dropped at least 15 to 20 degrees. Just that in 10 quick. minutes. And I, you can hear me on our ring doorbell alarm. I walk out there and I go, someone stole my snowman. My snowman was gone. <laughs> now, it's just not a small snowman. It's an eight-foot blow-up I've had that's been hooked to the ground and just It was gone. a big snowman head, like an eight-foot yeah. snowman head. And she took a picture as we were walking up. Just that's had to take a picture part. that day. And then 10 minutes later, it was gone. I mean, the, everything ripped out of the ground power cable worked out of the extension cord and he was just gone nowhere to be seen i searched our neighborhood i went i drove around the neighborhood for like two days afterwards looking to see if any of my neighbors put it up because if they did i was gonna rip it out of their yard right back home how does a snowman disappear in like a matter of seconds and but my three foot Yo baby grogu was still there yoda was there so we pulled that one in um but the weather had t taken such a turn like we got home just at the perfect time. But yeah, our big snowman, poof, gone. Everything was gone. Was we still don't know. And it was really cute, too. All <laughs> I know is it's going to appear in somebody's neighborhood next, or somebody's yard next That's year. what I said. If, if, okay. if we see it in somebody else's yard, we know who took our snowman. Okay. <laughs> Where'd you get that snowman? Exactly. It wasn't a Christmas present. No. And you know what's it was kind of a bummer because like it's not only did the, the temperatures drop, it started to rain and it was that mm -hmm. cold rain. Yeah. We just kind of gave up. And then the next day we were looking around and it's a mystery. And it's funny because we live at the back of our our community. So there's a fence behind us that leads to a community behind us, but I don't think it would have blown over the fence. We're in the corner pond. almost, so we have the pond where the gators are over here, and I didn't see anything over there floating. So you it's a it, in it just disappeared. I mean, the wind would have taken it that way, but it wasn't where we found that way. Yeah, so it was a very weird Christmas Eve. <laughs> We're outside looking for the snowman. It was just weird that everything was gone. The, the cords that held it to the ground, the power cable. So somebody could have taken it, maybe. And then they blamed the wind for it. Blame the wind. But, uh, it was that Jack Frost. <laughs> it was just strange. Um, but yeah, so Epcot was good though. And then um, the next day we had Christmas at home, of course. And um, it was, you know, it was just different. I think but everything is was different this year. But yeah. it, different isn't always bad. No. I mean, we we um, had plenty of baked goods in the house. You know, I ate all day. Um, we didn't really do anything Christmas Day. I no, mean, we Christmas just Day sat we just around ate and, and ate. Uh, <laughs> watch Christmas movies. Though. Watch Christmas movies and eight and eight and eight. Um, and then eight some more. My <laughs> boys were excited because they got their presents because they didn't lose their big presents that they were they did behave. Um, <laughs> they didn't get just body wash on Christmas Day. No, so they didn't get an like act body kit. Yeah, um, <laughs> I was doing a dollar tree in that brand. They were in the room. That's all they would have got. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was good. I mean, of course, I miss my family. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to see them at some point soon. But we did make the make the best of it. We did. I thought it was great. Um, everything worked out really well. Uh, it was a fun fun Christmas day. It was our first Christmas we've ever actually celebrated in Florida uh, on Christmas Day, which is something the boys and I had wanted to do since we and since we moved into this house. It'd be three years now. Um, we really wanted to celebrate Christmas in our house. So we, we, even though COVID forced us to stay home, we got to celebrate Christmas in our house, which was great. We I was the holdout. I was the one who was really torn about what to do. But things just aren't good in our home state right now. So it just, it's just, it was just the most logical thing to do. The to problem is, is that in Michigan, there's not a lot to do besides eating and shopping. And, <laughs> and we don't like to sit home. Uh, we're always on the go, so to go to Michigan where you can't go out to eat, you can't do anything. You can't really do anything right now. Would have, would have, oh, we would have been scratching at the walls to get out of there. And the mm-hmm. boys would have been bored. Yeah, so yeah. it probably worked out for the best. Um, so we'll wait till like know. things are better and then maybe go visit. But it, all in all, it was pretty good. It was, um, and then we had New Year's the next week. Yeah, so I'm, I'm checking my notes. Um, where are you at? Where am I at? Okay, well, check, check. Okay, so we went. Okay, so. Corey and you know Corey Tucker. He's on infamous Corey He's Tucker and his his saintly wife Lucretia. They were in town. She's a saint. I'm gonna have little statues made of her and put them on everybody's desk. We need to have Lucretia statues on our. Put enough with him. She up has to be a saint. <laughs> um, they were in town and uh, we met them the day before New Year's Eve. We met them on that the- Wednesday at Magic Kingdom. Yes, because Tuesday Corey was at Disney Springs. Yes. We'll talk about that. After, was that where they went? I think it was on Thursday, went on Tuesday. But we, so we went to um, uh, Magic Kingdom that Wednesday. And I, again, let's think back to typical Christmas week at Disney Parks. Um, usually around this time, you're seeing wall to wall people and they're turning people away. It's at capacity, it's this and that. So we went to Magic Kingdom and it was not bad. It was weird because this was the first year we didn't have to worry about getting out the parks at capacity. Yeah, usually, usually we, you know, I'm waiting for like capacity things to hit and news. There's always news that week um, that, you know, they're only letting in Part, the, or resort guests. Resort or guests. Premium or, plus pass. Yeah, or it's just, it's different because um, usually it's just a hot mess that week. And when we went over to Magic Kingdom, it wasn't bad at all. There was no, like, driving up to the park, there was no way to get into the turnstiles. Um, there was just no wait at all. I think we, we went We on, waited longer to get our lunch at Pecos Bills than we did anything. We did. That's, <laughs> that's just so funny because that's where the biggest crowds were at, was to get your food because you have to do mobile order, which I love mo- mobile order. Mobile order is the way. best way to go. Um, but, yeah, so we waited for food. But um, we went on Haunted Mansion and I say we Pirates. Made, and Pirates. Um, we made it, waited maybe what, 20? It was half minutes? of what it was posted, pretty much. Half, a little bit more than half that. Um, it was great, actually, but, um, lines moved fast. There was no problems. Um, no, no, it was really nice, but not what we were there Christmas Eve. Was it last year? We were at Epcot last year for Christmas Eve. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, sorry. And then we were at the Magic Kingdom the year before for New Year's Eve. And just a person, whole different experience. Nothing like they were this past one. Yeah. Big difference. It was still fun. It was still great to hang out with Corey and make fun of him all day and on some rides. <laughs> um, so for New Year's New Year's Eve, though, you know, usually he said saintly question mark. She is. Saying. Your wife is a saint. What's up with you? <laughs> so <laughs> um, speaking of Corey, uh, the next day was uh, New Year's Eve, and Corey had decided that you know we should totally have something here now granted he planned this in like march <laughs> not knowing not knowing was everything be. was going to be going on he's like i think we should have it okay. new year's eve at your house well because the parks weren't okay. doing their usual like okay so we rang in the new year with um cory and lucretia last year at epcot now and that was crazy because they had like dance parties in the different countries they, they had their fireworks it was a room. rave in italy <laughs> oh, right. oh god italy was awesome it was like you needed like glow sticks and and, All then, that. and then Elliot had the silent dance party. They had silent DJ or silent dance party, whatever you call it. We Which first he had me at surgery today. Yes. The replacement, and from what I heard, he's doing well. So. Yes. Um, 
so anyway, the whole it was just very different, and they weren't going to be doing any of that on property this year. So there was, and actually, they weren't even staying open till midnight. No, they were all closing for which I'm, I'm guessing they just didn't want people gathering in any area at midnight, which would be the reason I think. Yeah, it definitely was not. And I told Corey, I said, if this year ends up like last year, I will never spend New Year's Eve again with him because last year I spent it with him. It was <laughs> bad 2020. If 2021 turns out that way, first you can blame Corey Tucker. So you're saying it's his fault that this that this year was crap? Because we, because we were together <laughs> and the worlds could not have the two of us together bringing in the new year. I don't know what it was. Um, but it was it was quiet. Um, you there, know, just that why there were no raves at the end. There was no raves at our house. Uh, but like the kids played like this board game and um, we sat around and talked and ate. And, um, and eight. And eight, and then ate some more. The two week window was. <laughs> my cheat window was really just, I took advantage of the cheat window. I had so much sweets and things. Um, and if you order popcorn chicken from Publix, make sure you order the right size. <laughs> we still got it. We have more, we have enough popcorn chicken to feed the whole neighborhood. Um, but anyway, so we. I'm going to offer it up for my frosty return. <laughs> <laughs> if you give us our snowman back, we'll give you a whole platter chicken. <laughs> Um, I would throw some snacks in there. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up putting on the TV and watched a little bit because you know you watch Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve, whatever, and it was just a mess because there's no there was no crowds. The entertainment was a little weird. Um, a little. It it was just. It was so weird. Did you guys watch it? Like usually you see all the the confetti in New York and all the celebrating, and it was just. I just think it's funny Planet Fitness is the sponsor of New Year's, right? Because <laughs> that's when everybody's making their New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose weight this year. Planet Fitness. I keep calling it Planet Fitness. I don't know why. Planet Fitness, Planet Fitness. I'm like, that is so smart of them to put their name everywhere. So when you think about your resolution, you know where I'm going to go? And the, Planet Fitness. And even did you notice on the ball drop this year, it was all advertisement? Like you had to look past like three ads to actually see the, the ball. And one of those, those ads is Planet Fitness. So I don't know if it's subliminal, like it's a new year, get your butt to the gym. Oh, yeah, because every commercial break was a Planet Fitness commercial. It's free till the seventh. <laughs> this part was not meant sponsored by Planet Fitness in any possible way. Robert Carlson, like, I stole your snowman. I'll be back for the chicken. Make sure it's fresh. I want it by eight o'clock. You got twenty three minutes to get here. We need our snowman back. I'll put the chicken in the air fryer. It'll be nice and warm by the time you get here. I think we even have some snacks left over, like sweets wise. So. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Whatever you want, Robert. You bring back my snowman. We're good. Um, so I should have went to Walmart the day after Christmas. Probably could have got them for half off. What? The new snowman. Ugh. I didn't even think Missed about opportunity. It. Next so, year. so okay. So I was talking to my parents to ask them if it was like that where they are, but at midnight actually before but midnight it was the craziest thing um we we all we took the kids out in front of the house and there was so many fireworks going on it was 360 fireworks in our it was 360 fireworks they were like they were everywhere it was like we you know we obviously were home for fourth of july this this past year it was more and Corey was here then and too Corey was there then too but anyway, so it was um, it was it was more so than the Fourth of July. I've never seen so many fireworks. When we went to bed at two thirty, they were still going off. And before we, you know, we went back in the house with the kids. Um, my one son said it looks smoky in our neighborhood. I mean, it looked like there was a fog was. over the whole neighborhood. We had somebody behind us lighting them off. Somebody two doors down was. Somebody in that direction, somebody in that direction. So it was, it was every pot, it was, it was 360. Wherever you looked, you saw fireworks going off around our house, which was kind of cool. But I saw on Facebook that a lot of communities did that, not just here. Yeah. But I asked my mom, you know, like, did they do that in Michigan? I'm like, no, <laughs> they weren't celebrating in Michigan. They weren't invited by a um, And I don't know, I, I'm wondering if it's partially because our town, you know, in the Orlando area, always has all the parks do fireworks they all do parties and this year there was nothing so i don't know if people were trying to make their own Possibly. type of thing i know Corey wanted to hire a dj he was gonna bring a little tic-tac <laughs> yeah, tic -tac, whatever his name was we went to um sam's club that day and i should have noticed there was something because like when you walked in there was all the diet food on the, this side and then this side was like cake and fireworks <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm like, not in the same box. What the hell was everywhere. a fire art? Yeah, but they were everywhere. They were everywhere, and it was it was just absolutely. It looked insane. like Fourth of July at Sam's Club with the amount of fireworks they had. It did. It was kind of crazy. So I don't know if that was a Florida thing or what, but I I there was a whole lot of fireworks. Randy just said right. People wanted to make sure 2020 got blown out. Yeah, blown out. And, and you know the thing is, is that um that's what I was thinking. Like, is it because everybody was just so happy to get rid of 2020? And, and you know, it's not like. You wake up the next morning and everything has changed. You, you know, that's the thing. Only thing changed is the date on the check. Yeah, I mean, it didn't. It doesn't change anything, but I think it was very symbolic that this that 2020 was such a dumpster fire, and people were excited to get rid of it. Well, because 2020 is officially over, and that's when everything started. That's where hopefully everything peaked, and now we should be on the downward. Not going. Uh, eventually, the downward path to better times again. Upward, so, maybe. Yeah. Um, um, so it's going to take time. It is. Take time. So, but speaking of um, parks and capacity and all that good stuff. So, interesting enough, um, Universal. We had planned on to go to Universal to see their uh, Christmas stuff. And we never made it because mm -hmm. Universal hit capacity every day yeah. and early. And so I, every time we tried to, you know, oh, you want to go to Universal? You know the whole Christmas break, so we never made it over there. No, we kept saying, "Oh, we'll go this afternoon," and it would have just reopened or whatever. I'm like, "Well, do we really want to go? Because what if we get there and it hits capacity again?" Or See, whatever. that's the thing. So what, know, so how they run it, I don't, I don't know. Is like, so the one morning they were at capacity like by nine o'clock in the morning. Eight fifteen, the day Chuck was there. Yes. Yep. And then they'll say, "Well, we're going to open it. We'll let people know when mm -hmm. they can start letting people in." Now we're across town. By the time we would drive over there, it's a possibility that by the time we got there they could be at capacity again exactly. because of the the crowds it was just it was just crazy yeah you almost had to be at city walk eating when they were open to guarantee you get in because who knows if we would have or not but they had a display where they took you in the back if you've ever been there for Halloween Horror Nights, you go backstage into some of the different warehouses and from what we were told they had a warehouse set up of past Christmas displays from the Thanksgiving Day yeah, the big Thanksgiving floats. Yeah, they bring the floats, the balloons and such, and they had them in their warehouses. And you could actually tour that, and that was the main reason we wanted to go. We knew, looking at times, we were not going to ride anything. Fast and um, the Furious had a three-hour virtual wait, so there was just no way we were going to ride anything. It, he's like, if Fast and the Furious has that kind of a wait, because I mean, it's a joke around here that that's a terrible ride. <laughs> so um, a lot of out-of-towners, maybe they would like it, but it was a very long wait. Long way. So we never got to go to Universal. So instead of Disney hitting capacity, have. we still haven't. We need to. Um, it was Universal at capacity this year, not Disney. Just FYI. And what's, um, next? what's next? What's oh, next? Oh, okay. So during Christmas uh, week, Gideon's Bakehouse did a soft opening. And for those of you who are unaware, it is kind of like a steampunk looking cookie place <laughs> that they their cookies have if, if you remember the whole thing a long time ago chips oh i bet you can't bite a chip gideon's takes that up the notch like ten thousand times because their stuff is so packed with chips or nuts or, or whatever they put into that one they're huge they're half pound cookies um you're limited when they when they open you're limited to six per person you can order ahead um at their one they're they actually have a building in town somewhere there actually yeah it's in Orlando and then they opened up a extension one at uh, Disney Springs it's right across or uh next to Wine Bar George right or across, across from, from Wine, Wine Bar, Bar George on um, the hangar Bar on the other side of Morimoto huh? kind of Morimoto would be on that side it's behind Morimoto yeah well yeah that's what I meant yeah so it's kind of like where Wine Bar George is on that corner right there anyway so they did a soft opening and they were doing a virtual line. The virtual line most days was a three hour wait to get cookies. But the the good thing was that you could, you know, go shop or whatever. Um, I know Disney Springs did hit capacity at some point, um, but the parks did not. But yeah, three hour wait to get some cookies. Now you're probably wondering why. I mean, they are really good, good cookies. The Flight right. Pig used to sell them for them. Um, they sold the, the chocolate counter, chip just the chocolate chip. Yeah, just the chocolate chip. They were eight dollars a piece when Flight Pig sold them. 
and they would get two deliveries a day. One was when they opened at 10, the second one was at two o'clock, I think, and they sold out within minutes of every mm -hmm. time just because that's how good these cookies are. People actually wait for them. So everybody was excited when they were gonna open their own shop because they would have their variety of cookies, which they have just a handful of them, don't they? Yeah. But then they have cake. They have cakes there too. And they they have this cold brew that everybody like waits for as well. But the cookies, um, are, they have one that's exclusive to Disney Springs. It's a coffee cake cookie. Mm -hmm. um, Corey said they had a Krampus cookie, which was like all chocolate with like mint on the top. He said it was really good. Um, but they have they have all these you know different cookies. So Saturday night, uh, actually Saturday afternoon, uh, Gideon's put out an announcement that they were closing again, and everybody lost their minds because. You know, people have been waiting all week for, you know, three hours for these cookies and then they were closing. So from what I gathered, it's because during the soft opening, you know, they were just trying to get their bearings and figure everything out. And that they're going to actually have a grand opening, like reopening. I guess. And it was actually a really good test as far as crowd goes for them to see how they could handle it. Because it's a small establishment. It's yeah. not big. And I think that that's part of the, the you know, the three hour window to... Um, come back and get your cookies. I would not, truthfully, truth be told, I mean, I love junk food. I ate my weight in cookies in the past two weeks, probably more. But I would not stand outside a building for three hours to get a cookie. Virtual line, I would. If I could go shop, walk around, do whatever, and then come back, I don't have a problem with that, but actually standing outside. And then Corey had said that when they got the um the text that it was their turn in the virtual queue i think he said they still wait another like 20 minutes so that's a long time to wait you have to really want one of those cookies but they, they are good they are good though and they're heavy i mean they are heavy yeah, like, they are a half pound <laughs> cookie they are not a cookie you should and they're not to share if you you know you cut them cut them up or when we used to get them from the flight pig we would get one and then we would just break pieces off it for the next couple of days because they're so Big. What I'm thinking is once they open, we'll probably have to go down there and do a live feed from it and show people what it's all about. And then <laughs> we have to, hours. and then we'll have to sample every cookie while we're there. I'm gonna need another cheat window. Um, we'll <laughs> Your birthday's in a month and a half. So it is. I think that'll be my next cheat window, but that'll be like a day, maybe two. Okay. Now I'm thinking about cookies. I'm Her birthday's a day before Valentine's Day, so it's a guaranteed two days of cheat. <laughs> It's a little cheat window. <laughs> it's a small, like, bathroom size window. Um, so, yeah, all in all, the um, the holidays at Disney were not crazy. Everything seemed to go okay. Um, I, I really, I think it went as well as it could have. I th yeah, I, I hadn't heard anything, any negativity about it all. Um, no. They, they did it well. Again, Disney's. Uh, through this whole thing since they reopened Walt Disney World, they, they've done it well. Um, the enhancements they've made that will help once things do get back to normal, like the security check now is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's amazing how fast that, and that came out of necessity, that they just yeah. needed to figure out a way to do it faster where they weren't touching people's things, and they did, and they figured it out, and it's great. Um, but it'll matter detectors now that walk through. Yeah, you walk right yeah. through. So the, for those of you that haven't been back to the parks, they've had these high tech metal detectors now. It's where you know you used to stand in those lines, and the security would take the line and go through all your bags. Well, now you walk right through, and they have like it's like at the airport, and there's a screen, and uh, it, if they see something, then they go through your stuff. They pull you aside. The but they watch. It's it's so much quicker and more efficient the way that they're doing it now. And I think, it, to me, I feel a little bit safer because... I do. The Springs was always one that we worried about because there was no security check at the Springs, and no, now there is. Now there is. So. I just think because of everything that's happened in the past year, they've made changes that were for the better overall. They did. They, they are much better for the for overall. Uh, Disneyland was already that way. Disneyland was very safe, where as far as security checks yeah. and stuff like that. And it's sad that we live in a world where we have to worry about that, but we do. Yeah. And um, now I'm, I'm, it's wonderful to see Walt Disney World has finally um, matched it with uh, Disney Springs being just like that. And I think that's Disney important. Disney. You know, it, yeah, it's a pain to have to, you know, wind through the garage like that, but it's for your own good, your own safety. You know, if it's for my safety, I will spend the extra few minutes to wait in line uh, to know that I'm safer going in there. I mean, yeah, they, because, they can't guarantee 100%. Your of course risk, not. But they, they, it really helps tremendously what they've done, and I applaud them for what they've and you know the thing is, I'm just going to say one thing before we switch topics because we're going to be wrapping up. 
Um, so, you know, everybody has their opinions and there's been plenty of them online. And um, as far as Disney's rules and people trying to get around said rules and uh, especially when it comes to masks and the time that we spent on Disney property over the holidays, cast members were very efficient. Um, we were walking into Magic Kingdom the one day and um, they have security before you even go or a cast member directing where to go before you even get to the temperature checks. And people are trying to get past them with no mask on. Um, and the one person that we saw, they had a they had a kid in a stroller. Now this child was probably four or five. I mean, let's just be honest. <laughs> and didn't have a mask on. And the cast member said very nicely, um, "How old is your child?" Because they need to put a mask on. And the lady looks at him and says, two. And he's I think she thought it was two and under didn't like have to wear a yeah, mask. Like a and he's like, oh, two, okay, well, then she needs to put a mask on. Well, no, she's two, and then the arguing had started. Well, the cast number one, the child put a mask on mm -hmm. because they're not they're not making any exceptions. You know, if, if you wanna go to the parks right now, you have to do what they're asking. And I feel sorry for these cast members because it, they're not making the rules, they're trying to enforce it so that everybody can have a good day and you'd be surprised how many people were trying to get away with not following the rules. Yeah, it's actually, it's crazy how many people are just, it's, and I told myself before, it's that entitled, I'm going to do what I want. I don't do care. Do you know how much I paid to come here? Well, we all paid. We all paid to come here. <laughs> Sorry. But we all want to be safe. And Disney is not a, uh, it's, you're, it's a privilege to be able to go to It's Disney. a privilege, it's, not a right. They, they, they purchase that it's not a right. And Disney does have the right to tell us we have to wear masks, that you have to do this. And they, they will tell that. you on the loudspeaker. I mean, they're blunt and plain as day. You follow the rules or we will ask you to leave. And they're not lot, kidding. And a lot of people, <laughs> Disney of old, before all this happened, Disney would always, okay, well, you shouldn't do that, but okay. Because Disney never wanted to Because they were trying them, to keep never, guests happy. Never tell a guest, no. Never yeah. tell a guest they have to do yeah. something. But I think for the safety of the 99.9% .9 of the people who do obey the rules, yeah. Disney had to kind of get a little tough, and people didn't like that. But you know what? I, I don't have a problem with that. Again, it's it's our safety of everybody. And you don't know that person walking next to you what they've been through. You don't know if they flew on an airplane with somebody who's sitting next to them that got on that plane that maybe had the virus, and they passed it to them, and now they've coughed on you, and now you've got it. You don't know that. And with Disney doing these little things, it helps us protect us all. And that's that's what you have to look at. You have to look at your safety, your family's safety. When we go, the boys have a hand sanitizer. Michelle has hand sanitizer. I did that you know, before. I'll she did that before. This I'm a germaphobe. Now, now she just carries five <laughs> with her. Um, but we're, <laughs> we're always prepared. We always take the precautions you have to take. And for the good of everybody, is it really that bad of a thing? You know. Here's the way I look at it. Do you remember March? April, May, <laughs> where we weren't allowed to go anywhere, at least we do have some freedoms to where we can do some of the things we enjoy. Mm -hmm. We just have to adapt to what the current situation is. And I commend cast members for having to deal with so much because they do not get paid enough. <laughs> no, they, they deserve so much more credit because just a little bit of that we were there to I every time somebody is arguing about the rules and why or cutting in line or oh, there was a lot of that too a lot of cutting in line a lot of line cutters yeah, it, was <laughs> it was really bad I tell you what though it's funny like like uh you know you can make, make me wear a mask but I'm gonna go cut in line it's like they just really wanted to do what they Break wanted the to do <laughs> And it's funny because we were in line for a haunted mansion and you know, you still have to distance, right? So like we were with um, Corey and Lucretia and like our kids were together and we were together, but we were, you know, we were one group, but we were spaced out a little bit. So I turn around, I was talking to somebody and I turned around to say something to my sons. <laughs> There's different people there. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, where are the boys? So I look around these people and my, my kids are so polite because they know they better be or they're, I don't care if they're taller than me, they best be. So I look and I'm like, what happened? 
So my older son says, um, oh, excuse me, that's my mom over there. We're together. And uh, the guy said something to him like, oh, we didn't cut in line. And he and uh so what and andrew was just like okay well um i just want to be with my family so the guy's like oh yeah yeah so he let us go in front of him well then the people behind me called him to the carpet because he they did cut in line and a cast member made them go to the back of the line but they tried it i mean and it was just like you know come on you guys like it really wasn't that big of a deal to just just do what you're supposed to do and these cast members are doing their very best to keep order and and to make sure that people have a good time and it's uh yeah it was it was interesting but for the most part everything was good no it was great it was great and i, I don't have a problem with everybody hand sanitizing now too because i've seen too many people walk out of the bathrooms without washing uh, so at least i know there's some kind of sanitizer going on there i've always been that person that like we talked about this in TMS on Fan Nation a couple of years ago. Like I will bring my hand sanitizer in the bathroom stall and I clean the whole flipping thing. I do. I, I think it should work that when you walk out just the way uh, they flush or whatever, when you walk out, there should be like something that just sends a mist over everything <laughs> that will dry within seconds. Um, so that was because I told stuff. somebody, if you ever go into a stall at Disney and it smells like Bath and Body Works, That's Michelle I was there cleaning it for you. So you're welcome. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be wrapping up. But I wanted to mention one more thing, and then we're done. Uh, so today, I, a couple hours ago, I put out um, the new Stitch Crashes Disney collectible line that is going to be monthly this year. Like the Minnie Mouse one from last year. The Minnie Mouse one that caused the frenzy and caused them to have to have merch pass on Shop Disney. You know the one. <laughs> So it worked so well last year, let's do it again with another character. So now what that's going to be, if you did not see that article, is they are doing a themed stitch every month. And like the first month is Beauty and the Beast themed. And I guess there's going to be pins and t-shirts and like a, a, a line that goes with just that month. So eBayers, get ready. Yeah, eBayers, get ready. You get another year of this. I'm making a fortune off people who can't get through. Yeah, so there's going to be merch pass. So you can double check my article, but I want to say merch pass is the 12th. Um, and then you, it's, it's, you know, hit or miss if you actually get chosen for a merch pass. Mm -hmm. But it's going to, he, Stitch is going to have a different movie theme. And they put out a teaser that February's theme is Lady and the Tramp. That makes sense. But, but they didn't say, know. they don't say what it's going to look like. But, yeah. it's, but that makes sense because that is the movie. Of, I love well, Lady and the Tramp. It goes with, goes with Valentine's Day. Yeah, so the frenzy continues. Now there's another collectible thing a month that everybody can fight about. So, <laughs> so excited. And you, you, you really do get caught up in that sort of thing. I mean, when you find what? Oh. When you find out that something is limited edition and you might not be able to get it or whatever, then you want it, even if you really don't, but you just want it because. So, so I'm, anytime we release something that lost people, <laughs> it's a limited edition. It's a limited edition. Oh. <laughs> but so, yeah, I'm sitting here putting this article together, and I'm like, am I going to collect stitches now? That's funny. Uh, just because that st stitch will crash the site again. Don't they use stitch when the site crashes? Yes. Then you cause mischief and cause the yes. site. So it's funny that they chose stitch to be the one that his line is going to be officially crashing the site now when it happens. Oh, Lord, help stuff. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I haven't decided if I want one yet, but I feel like peer pressure. I'm just going to need to get one. Where? Where are you going to put? You have all the Minnie Mouse dolls in a bag because you have no place to put them. That does not matter. I wouldn't talk, Mr. Pop Vinyl. They're all on shelves and they look really organized Sorry. and well. In one room in the house, it's upstairs. Um, but yeah. So Corey, and, Corey and Stone love my collection. Well, you know, I'm glad somebody does because it's just way too much for one house. It's way too much. I'm approaching 700. <laughs> yeah, because somebody needs that. I'm it's trying like, to beat that guy with 3,000. Oh, God. We're going to need their house. That's fine. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. 12. <laughs> Corey said you can put them in the pop room. It's been reading. It was supposed to be the office. Um, well, we don't use it. It was our, <laughs> it was our studio for a while there. Um, so, uh, speaking of Lost Princess Apparel, we will have some new things coming out this week. This week. This week. Um, you don't want to miss that. Hey, Shane's finally on. Hey, Shane. Welcome home. Welcome. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, it also, like, we have a shopping group for Lost Princess Apparel. 
um, if you would like to join it, because that's fun. Um, and we also have a um, TMSM weight loss support group that just started up again. It's kind of been dormant because nobody cared about dieting for the past <laughs> year. Um, but it's starting up again. Um, so if you want, like, you know, weight loss support and a place to, you know, talk about the struggles and the tips and everything for weight loss, it's TMSM weight loss support group. Feel free to join. Um, um, one thing I was going to mention is that uh, last month, month and a half ago, we started sending out the Main Street Mouse newsletter again. Uh, um, Sean's been doing that. On Sundays, it goes out. If you haven't signed up, the emails of the past, we had a hard time importing them all and verifying them all, so we kind of started a brand new email list. Yeah. So if you go to the site, there is an email newsletter sign up um, on the toolbar. I believe there's another one towards on the right sidebar or in the bottom. I don't know, there's a couple places on there to sign up for the newsletter. So if you wanted to sign up for that, um, right now it's only going out on Sundays. Uh, we're just kind of doing uh, did you see articles from the past because week. Because Facebook isn't showing yeah. the post, so this way you get a recap of all our blogs of the week. Yeah, we're trying to put the top five or six, whatever comes out. And then if major breaking news happens, we're going to have the ability to send out an email alert to everybody because, mm -hmm. like she said, Facebook is really about 2 to 3% of the people who like our Facebook page actually see our Facebook posts. Um, which when you have 400,000 followers, that's over. really, yeah, over 400,000, that's really a small number of the, the total. It's very mass. frustrating. It's very frustrating. <laughs> so if you sign for the email alert, um, those go out to all the valid emails. You just have to confirm your email address. Um, you'll get an email back when you sign up just to confirm it, and then you'll get our emails uh, when we send them out weekly. And you can unsubscribe at any time. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, just, just something we've started doing again to uh, keep you guys informed. Yeah, we try our best. I know this, this year has not been, well, last year, all a bunch of good news so hopefully you know you want to stay tuned to what we put out because hopefully the news gets better i think it will i was reading <laughs> something today they're um starting to put their focus towards uh the 50th which is later this year oh yeah um for walt disney world so you're gonna start seeing a lot of things i think getting ready and geared up for that I so. um i was also reading an article that uh josh tomorrow was speaking about how disneyland is ready once they can reopen with um avengers campus and ready to roll forward with it. So um, exciting times. Uh, hopefully the vaccine gets out, travel gets going again. Speaking of travel, uh, don't forget about MEI Mouse Fan Travel and Becky and her team. Um, you can find their links on our site. They will help you out as well as Kingdom Strollers, who's our uh, stroller sponsor that can help you out if you come to Florida and you need a stroller rental. They will help you out with that. So those are our two sponsors. You can find all their links and such on the site and they'll help you out. And please, again, even though the holidays are over, small businesses really need your support. And we are a small business yes. and, you know, word of mouth helps us so much. So if you, you know, if you already have all our clothing, maybe tell a friend or two. <laughs> you know, Lost Princess Apparel is pretty cool. And we got more stuff, great stuff coming. Or if they love Disney, just get them to watch the uh, watch our Main Street Mouse pages and yeah, stuff. Yeah, Main Street Mouse pages, because um, we work hard every day to make sure we put out content. If there is no news, I find something to share with you, whether it's a video, a recipe, uh, a craft, um, shopping stuff, whatever. So every day, I'm making sure to put stuff out for you guys. So word of mouth helps us. So I really appreciate you guys supporting us Definitely. and telling people about us. And for those, uh, we do have some men's things getting ready to hit uh, Lost Princess Apparel here in the next couple weeks. Um, so just keep your eyes focused on that. They're actually um, like a hockey jersey style that I uh, created uh, with help of a few people. And those are going to be coming out. And they're, um, so far, we've got three prints that will be coming in the next week or so. So you got to stay tuned for that. Yep, there'll be three different designs. You've seen one of them with the Tangled one I've worn. Uh, Corey's worn it. Uh, who else has worn it? Ronnie's worn it. Um, so those are going to be coming out very soon. And we'll have those available and um women can wear them as well but it's finally something that men will wear as well men's so line that's good i know you guys have been waiting so men's hockey jerseys will Does be coming Scott has some jerseys for sale like lpa i will have jerseys that's what i was just saying yes yeah. thank you for asking yeah those are coming there's gonna be three of them um they are supposed to be here i think within the next week to 10 days and once i get them uh we will get pictures and get them up there's the first three but i have probably another 15 ready to go to print. I just want to see how these first ones do so I can adjust and figure out what sizes and such we need. Yes. So stay tuned because a lot of good things are coming. And if it, none of the things that we do would be possible if it wasn't no, for you all. So for thank sure. you so we much. And thank you for support. supporting us. And, you know, 2020, it's been really difficult, but we made it through with your help. And you guys are always a blessing to us. And we truly Definitely. appreciate your love and support. And, um, I guess that's it for that's a, today. TMSM radio is going to be getting better, so stay tuned for that. That's He's coming. working on the radio station. Radio station, too. something new is about to happen with that. I'm also working on something else, hopefully for September's time frame, so we've still see lots of stuff coming. Stay tuned. No wonder I don't sleep.
Great. We always got something on. So anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we appreciate you spending an hour with us. Yes, we do. And please take care. And we will see you real soon. Take care, everybody. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.